cheated. Oh. At the funeral, she just looks so loser. Yeah. You're just bad at lying. Well, why did you get oh. caught into this? I brought him into this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I YouTube and online for you guys. We probably will also do like a Khan Academy thing as well, just um, for some extra practice. So just a heads up on that. Um, but I know I have to be gone, so that weekend's going to be like extra, or it's going to be an extra long time in terms of um, not having me live. But I'll try my best to make it kind of seamless as I can. And hopefully, I'll be able to send good news that I, I completed running the Grand Canyon at that point. I would do it that Sunday. I'm doing that evening. So, hopefully, it all goes well. So, um, in section 3 1, we talked about all these different vocab words. So, looking at this drawing, I'd like us to kind of name a set of skew lines, a set of parallel lines, a set of parallel planes, and then perpendicular lines. So, there's a lot of different lines in this drawing. So um, there's almost a question exactly like this on the test where you can just name any two skew lines for me and I kind of look at your answer depending on what you guys chose. So, so we'll start with skew. Are there any, or what set of skew lines? So give me a line or a set of lines that are skew from one another. What do we got? You know it's going to be a line at least. Well, let's start with ED. What's skew to ED? So we'll give you a skew line or a skew segment with ED. AB. Um, yeah, they're not, well, I might want to, yeah, I'd say maybe they could be parallel. Is there, yeah, what do you think? So A, F, yeah, so that one is definitely not parallel. It's going this way. So this one with ED. So what I was trying to say about 
um, 8C. I guess that one's a little bit on like the maybe like possibly parallel side. I'll show you guys the thing. I don't love that one as the answer. So because if we did ED, that's this front one, with the top back, technically those two could be parallel. Like, like if I kind of picture like the line going through, they could be in the same plane. So um, I would be afraid to use A, B, and E, D. How about parallel lines specifically? Let me, I'll start with one. I'll start with F, E. What's parallel to F, E? Go ahead, Michael. H, D. So F, E, and H, D are parallel. How about parallel planes? Guys, make sure masks are off, please. Parallel planes. So like in this classroom, we said it was like the front of the room and the back of the room. Now the planes don't have like this, the fancy letter with it here. So we need like three, or we need, um, yeah, three letters for planes. So I'm gonna say plane F E D. So that's the front one. Is parallel to plane one. So the front plane is parallel. Which plane? Yeah, go ahead. Loop. A, B, C. Yeah, that's fine. So like the back one, you can call it. So the front and the back. And then perpendicular lines. Let me start with H, B. It's perpendicular to... Perpendicular to HP. You could have picked any perpendicular lines. Just you guys are being quiet, so I'm picking one for you. What one's perpendicular to HB? Yeah, go ahead, Nolan. B C. Oh yeah, HB and B C you could say. Um yeah, because these are all squares. You could say F H H D. There's a lot of different ones that could be perpendicular there. So that'll be a question on our test, is being able to identify those. And I'm not looking for any ones in particular other than they definitely have to be the specific name that I ask for. So your answer might be different than what somebody else has, and I'm looking at yours specifically. So in section 3.2, this is where we got into um, the parallel lines with the transversals. So notice these lines are all parallel here. Parallel lines and transversals. So example one asks you to find all the measures of the angles in that diagram. So if you can label all those different angles, you should be able to do that based off of knowing that 105 degree angle here. So based off of this, we should be able to label all of them. So you want to take a minute to do that if you haven't already. See some of you guys already have those filled in. Because again, since those lines are parallel, we have a whole bunch that we can we can know there. And kind of as you're doing it, maybe thinking about how do you know that? Like I know vertical angles, I know linear pairs, I know alternate exterior angles corresponding. So In this, if I know this is 105, this is also 105 because of corresponding angle. I grabbed that one just because that's usually a tough one. 105 and 105 are corresponding. But that's kind of where we usually start with this. Or you could have found that this one is also 105, and that's either alternate exterior or vertical. 
We have vertical here. Once I know those four, all the other ones are linear pairs. So 105 and this little angle should add to 180. That'd be 75. 75. So when I have parallel lines, all I need to know is the one angle, and I have a whole bunch of angles that are congruent. All right, example two asks us to find the measures of x and y. What did you go for first in this one? I'd say there's one that's easier than the other to find first. Example two, what would you guys go for first? That's what would you do first? Oh, I try to find the y. Yeah, I would suggest finding y as well. Because of the fact that those two oh, add to 180. So you can find y because they add to 180 together. And we figure out then that y is, what is that, 107? Right. This would be 107 here. Now, I know y is 107. How would that help me find x? Yeah, go ahead. Because you need all the Okay, so he said that this is 107, and you do this is 107 too, right? And then those are the same? Or you could have done corresponding. That works as well. It's kind of whatever you see first. One's not faster than the other. It's not like that took a ton of time to say that those are alternate interior angles. So those two should be, so x plus 17 should equal 107 for whatever reason you guys came up with. So. Do you use corresponding? Do you use alternate interior and then vertical? It works either way. So I subtract 17. So x ends up being 90. And just be careful on the test. I try to do a good job of like saying what do x and y equal, leaving you a space for that. But then if I'm asking for a particular angle, I'll kind of write that and ask for that. So just make sure you answer all my questions. Um, after years of watching students not completely answer the question, I've left blanks more often. Um, so hopefully that you guys get everything kind of covered there. All right, so in section 3.3, three, Now, basically, what we can use is we can use those, all our different angle rules to prove the lines are parallel. So right now, we don't necessarily know the lines are parallel. We kind of try to assume they would be and figure out the x value that would make that work. So the angle rules they prove lines are parallel. Now, knowing some of the names, why we, like, so, like, when I asked Luke how he knew, and he told me alternate interior angles, and then that Reese jumped in and said you could have used corresponding, the fact that they know those names, that's really helpful, and I, I'm assuming they're going to do well, because they know the reasons why things work. So, um, if they had no idea why they knew that, and they just happened to be lucky guessers, um, that made me a little more worried about what they're doing. So. How about this one? What do you guys think? There are multiple ways to get to the answer, but there's probably a more straightforward way. Yeah, what do you think, Luke? Corresponding. You did corresponding this time? Uh, they're not uh, those two together. Oh, so he did corresponding. So oh, we're, um, I think you just I get it. Yeah, it's the other C one. So consecutive interiors. No, that's fine. That's what I thought, that's why I went back and looked at your paper. So consecutive interior, and again, if the names just aren't coming to you, um, I have to check real quick, I'll just see if I have a, I can't remember if I did a word thing for this chapter. So um, consecutive interior angles, these two should do what? Add to 180. So 
104 plus 2x plus 22 should equal 180. And those, again, are called um, consecutive interior. They're the only ones that add to 180. So we combine the 104 and the 22. So then I can move this 126 over. And we're left with 54 there. And then this would be 27 for our x, I believe. So that was kind of the first half of the chapter. And then we transitioned into algebra review, which happened to also be graphing. So um, this is where we brought in slope and um, talking about how steep a line is. We talked about slope dude. So we got into slope here. Knowing our two slope formulas, which we've written down a few times. So finding the slope of the line and then finding the slopes of those two lines. And talking about their parallel, perpendicular, and neither. So if you guys want to take a minute to try examples four and five, I'm going to freeze the board for a second. I just want to look to see. I can't remember if I did a, a word bank that I was going to look at my, my stuff from last year. So if you guys want to look at examples four and five, try those. Give it a little bit of time to work. You've already done them already. The time to work ahead is fine. How are we doing on these? So finding the slope of that line there, first of all, looking at it already, hopefully you realize if you picture slope dude moving from, he's moving eastward, he should be going downhill. Already I should be thinking downhill is going to be negative. And I already look at that line and think it's pretty gradual, so it's going to be a pretty small number. So it's negative and it's a small number or maybe even a fraction because of the fact that I know it's not very steep. So kind of going, knowing that, going into it so that you don't just like do something silly and, and like flip the fraction or something mistakenly. So rise over run. We're going down one and then over how many? Four. So down one over four, and you can check any of the points. Um, you can go far apart, you can go close together. Down one over four once you simplify, that's our slope. 
Then it asks you if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we're finding the slopes of these two lines and then checking them. Now in this case, unless you grab the graph paper, I'm going to have to sketch this. Or not sketch it, sorry. Use the formula. So 4 minus a negative 4, careful with that. And then negative 1 minus 3. So I get 8 over negative 4. Think. Yeah. So I get a negative 2 for that slope. Then the other one, I do 1 minus 7 over 5 minus 2. So I get a negative 6 over 3. So I get a negative 2. Is that what you guys got? I don't remember them coming up that way. Oh, yeah. So what's true of the slopes? They're going to be parallel. So even though before I simplified them, they didn't match. Once I simplified, they did match. So then they're going to be parallel. Then it asks us the question, which line is steeper, the slope from example 4 or example 5? Which is going to be a steeper slope? Yeah, well, example 5. Example 5. The negative 2 is actually steeper than the negative 1 fourth. Remember, the negative versus positive doesn't really matter. It's just like the absolute value there. So like which one is actually like a bigger value? And two is bigger than a fourth. So this is the steeper line. So this is the steeper slope here. All right. So why don't we take a little break from notes? I don't know that this is gonna be the best break on the planet, but. We're gonna, um, if you haven't done so already, I do want you guys to get online and do the algebra assessment. Um, so I'm gonna pause the video. So those of you guys at home, if you haven't done the algebra assessment, please do.